Ancestors on the wall, let them speak. Ancestors, what would you like to say? Because I am listening with my everything. My ancestors, you who live in the graves of red soil and in the oceans that separate us, faded photographs on a shelf or hanging dust clad on a wall, your spirit surrounding and guiding us to a world of our dreams. I see your trace in every triumph and victory. A picture of you I carry in my heart. I close my eyes to see you when the world gets dark. Memories of you I have placed in jars for when I call each of your names, I know you're not far. I wonder who you were when I look at old photographs. I touch your faces, I hear your voices, and I feel your hopes. I search for the missing. You are a beautiful shade of brown in my photograph. Your struggle never knew. It never went away. I am still from injustice and racism. Your history has been revised. I am from partial narratives and stereotypes as I try to understand your past in order to understand my present. Seeking to create a better future for our descendants. For hundreds of years, my ancestors have been silenced. So let me be their speaker now. The earth trembles as my ancestors take their first step off the ledge. This place will never be the same. The world knows nothing of your humanity, only the powers that they possess. America, why must we endure your abuse? My grandmother's grandmother toiled these lands, rolling the soil even as the cloud of oppression rolled over the horizon, bringing this country ever closer to its glory. Oh, America, you beautiful monster. Oh, America, you magnificent thief. I am the unspoken words of hope of Martin Luther King. What would it take to change the world? That is the ultimate question at hand. What would it cost you? What sacrifices would it demand? We shall overcome. We shall overcome because I have a dream. That includes freedom for all, and that character, not skin color, should be what decides who people are. But unfortunately, he would never get to see his dream even evolve. If it wasn't for ancestors like Dr. King then, today, I probably wouldn't even be speaking to you all. Segregation. I grew up knowing to accept hate. It was a childhood version of how to segregate. White children were never kind to me through the years, forming more hate that built up and filled with fears. I was lucky compared to most kids, though. I never had a true taste of hate I had yet to know. In the past, kids were segregated for their race. It was as if this entire world bashed us for taking up some space. The entire nation split into two. 
White on black crime was something we all knew. Great men and women such as Rosa Parks, Daisy Bates, Ella Baker, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King stood in the great battlefield between us all, unsegregating those who needed it after all. But Martin Luther King was shot dead, fighting for what he wanted. Some people really didn't know his hopes, and they felt daunted. From chaos comes order and all that it brings, the systematic structures and political dreams. Today we fight another battlefield of pain. Though most of this fighting, it feels in vain. When the depression ran through the nation, we went back to segregation. It ran through all of us as people living in peace, chopping us up as humans without need, piece by piece. Piece by piece, another war is in sight, though we choose not to see it. A fatal blow to many of us as if we got hardly hit. Separating the nations through segregation in our own eye. Whether we be gay, straight, trans, or even bi, we're all still people and still human. And if only we truly knew about it then. But the thing about chaos and the order it grew is that eventually order will fail when chaos ensues. I grew up in a world that created all types of hate. But we all know we live in a world who chooses to segregate. This piece is very special to me. Um, some of you may know me, um, know that I've been fighting cancer. It will be two years in a couple of days. So when I came to the art gallery, when I was picking out my pieces, when she showed me this one, I immediately was just like, yes, I must write about this one. You count my total murders of over the years. I should be on FBI's most wanted list, but I'm not. LOL, JK, smiley face. They always seem to miss me. I hide in the depths of your skin. No doctor can find where I begin. Killed more than those who died on 9-11. You can be five or 97, I will still take your life as mine. I take your happiness, hair, health, and time, but hey, I don't commit the crime of prejudice. You can be black, white, gay, straight, Christian, or Buddhist. I enslave all that exists. I have a hundred types of transformation. I make millions go through chemo and radiation. I grow somewhere in the margin of about $50 billion, and I don't know about you, but that sounds like a white collar job to me. Blind to the eye to see you cannot stop me. When you hear my name, I make your tongue go lame when you're in the doctor's office with your husband or wife. No one feels the ton of strife when you spew a ton of blood as an offering to me you cannot stop me. I'm a riddle that doesn't have answers. You cannot stop cancer. 
But it's pretty ironic to want to die every day until you are forced to fight to live. I have wars rage against me. You blame me and shame me for doing my job. But maybe you should look at why I arrived. You blame genetics or food for giving this curse. But it's not what you put in your mouth, but what didn't come out that was worse. You invited me in and you asked me to stay by hiding your feelings and things you wanted to say. That hate that you ate was your true poisoning and the only way out is to learn to be open. I have no malice or motive. A villain, I am not. If you look deep within, you realize that this is a gift I have brought. Life is too short and you're doing it all wrong. And the fastest way to fix it was for me to come along. I'm a teacher and I give you a gift more precious than life. The realization that you have caused your own strife. I do not break families apart, but I bring them together. I show you that the weak are strong and to be vulnerable is better. You put values and assets with diminishing returns and I will make sure that all of those things burn. And out of the ashes, true beauty will grow until love is the only word you will need to know. Only you can stop me. Thank you. Um, well, they're all inspired. Um, this, like I said, this particular piece was inspired because I um, suffer with cancer. Um, and so, and then the piece around there, the Drew piece, um, when I saw it, I love abstract uh, art. And so what I got from that was segregation. So I was inspired through that and, and how it started intertwining when we talk about integration and then we become separate again. Um, and then the piece upstairs, ancestors, because uh, ancestor veneration is something that's a part of black culture, especially, uh, specifically African culture. So I chose that piece um, from that. So. Um, how does like, the music and the choreography, like how, what's your process? So the process with that, I begin with, I, of course, I write the poetry first and based upon, I'm a musician as well. So um, based upon the words that I write, I would choose, if I don't write it myself, I'll choose a, a song, not necessarily for the, the content, the words of that song, but for the sound that closely matches the words that I'm, that I'm reciting. Um, and so as far as the choreography from the dancing, that's totally self-autonomy of her. I let her create whatever she perceives, whatever I'm saying, and through the words and music. So, yeah. Did you, did you choose something in a second piece segregation? Did you like feel like I need a harmonica or were you, or the musician decides to use a harmonica? I'm saying, oh. Oh, the harmonica. Yeah. Um, oh, it's not even on. Oh, no. <laughs> My check. So I just chose the harmonica because it's a different in instrument. There's no specific rhyme or reason that I chose it. Um, it's just something I've never worked with in the past. I've always either had a double bass, um, um, a woodwind I instrument, um, or something of that nature. But I just wanted to choose something different for that piece. So. It really works. So even though you were intentional, uh -huh. it, it gave it such a, a eerie and like kind of connected, disconnected feeling. Yes, and that was that was the goal is to ha create an eerie feeling. Perfect. I'm, it's nice that you caught that. <laughs> so, any more questions? I don't have a question. I have more so of a comment. So I just thank you. Okay. 
it is indeed an honor to be in here. And I want to thank each of you artists for sharing your art and motion with us today. It is good. I mean, this is true. If I might have storm outside, I would not have missed this written world. But um, to be in a room, not only with beautiful art on the walls, but before these artists that are shared with us this evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing your gifts with us. Art and motion, truly. So I just want to thank each of you for coming out and sharing the, these moments with me um, through the rain and everything. I'm just happy that you made it. And I hope that I touch you in some kind of way or said something that you can take with you. And I'll also say something that they want to start here. So I thank you very much for, yes, thank you. You know, for opening up. You know, I've been in Chattanooga for 23 years now. And when I first came here, you know, you and I have worked for a long time. And the changes that you're bringing, bringing different cultures into the Hanum Museum, mm -hmm. thank you so much for making that change so that we can all share mm -hmm. our culture, regardless of where we come from, mm -hmm. our skin color, whatever we are all going through in life. Thank you for bringing everybody together to share. Absolutely, yes, yes. <laughs>